Cameron starts working again that week. Mm -hmm. He wants to feel useful again. And because they're both working from home now, it seems like a reasonable idea. Devin didn't want him starting yet, of course, but Cameron wants that sense of normalcy to come back faster. And his shitty job had seemed like the perfect solution. <laughs> Trying to work with mostly one paw does come as a bigger challenge than Cameron had expected, not realizing how much he used his non-dominant one. Typing is particularly slow, but he was getting better at managing it. Still, it makes him sluggish, and even though his boss is understanding, even telling him to just forward any rude customers her way, it still leaves him occasionally flustered in ways he isn't used to. After a rather harsh call that begins with, thank God, someone I can finally fucking understand, then ends with, you know what would have been faster? Cameron waits for the answer. Anything. This is the last time I buy some weak ass phone made from some shit factory. Cameron rubs his eyes, wondering how different the interactions would be if they did face-to-face -face video calls. I, I do want to say real quick, people who are rude to customer service people in general can go fuck themselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, you have no reason to be that rude or, or mean to somebody over the phone. Yep. You can be direct because often you're calling because you're frustrated about something, right? I mean, you don't yeah, like you can be direct. Customers. You're like insulting them and calling them. Yeah. yeah. And all that like that. Like, that's not direct. That's you just being a jackass. Mm -hmm. Unless the cu customer service representative is specifically rude, then I've even you don't have a reason to be specifically rude either. And even then, it's like, okay, listen, probably their last call just did shit like this. So I That's take a deep fair. breath and I go, listen, I'm just saying I got charged extra for this thing I was not supposed to get charged for, and I'm trying to work on a solution. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. this isn't even your fault. This is your company's policy's fault. Yeah. Can I, you work with that? I think I've been very, like, lucky to never have, like, a customer service person, like, be, I guess, rude to me. So I'm, I'm not used to, like, the idea of that. But then mm -hmm. again, like, I also, never... like, whenever I do call people on the phone, I'm usually much more, like, I don't know, like, docile is probably the way to put it. I'm like, oh, hello, how are you doing today? Can you help me with this? And, like, I always, like, put it like that, like, where it's, like, very friendly and very, like, soft, I guess, is the best way mm -hmm. to put it. And, like, that seems to work wonders with customer service people, because, like, I guess I'm not being aggressive, like, you will help me fix this one thing right now, or I will take your job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I refuse to be that type of asshole. <laughs> yeah. Your name's not Karen, so. <laughs> that is true. And, like, it, it's it's hard for my parents to be, uh, like, as unfrustrated with customer service, because usually uh, they speak with an accent, like, really hard. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's hard for them to understand my parents. And then sometimes on top of that, the per, uh, customer service representative also has some kind of accent, so it's even harder for my parents to understand. <laughs> so they're like, oh, man, right. customer service sucks, but it's probably mostly just the language barrier. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> yeah. This phone was actually assembled in the States after Julian pledged. Uh, and I think Julia is uh, China in this world. Mm. Yeah. It's not the answer the man wants to hear. Cameron can tell before he even gets cut off. Transfer me to your superior, please. Of course. One moment. As Cameron reaches for the button to his boss's line, he hears the man muttering under his breath. They didn't know that they hired squeaks for customer service. Jeez. Yeah, genuinely this dude here. <laughs> Does somebody want to punch somebody through the phone? 
Oh yeah. Click. No big deal. He would get one of those every week. And according to his coworkers, it's gotten worse since the pandemic started. Also a true statement. Oh, I know. yeah. Like, I still look back on that, and I still don't understand why people were thinking, like, this is a great idea to start yelling at people over the phone. Well, I'm no, like, I don't no. think it, I, I don't think they necessarily, like, are conscious about it. It's a natural that. psychological response, yeah. Like, you're, yeah. you're scared, you're stressed, you're nervous. And so there's a lot of changes. You take it out on the fo- you take it out on a person you can't see. And especially like well, and at least from someone who is an educator, like if you have kids and you're not used to working from home oh and also having to work oh like God. work with your kids at. Like, I had to have conversations. Not that bad. No one, no one used foul language, but I, I definitely had a few moments with some parents where I'm like, okay. It seems like you're having a meltdown, and I'm just going to listen to you. And then I'd call and be like, uh, squeak name, sorry. Um, I'd call my boss and be like, hey, uh, parent had a meltdown. And my boss would be like, yeah, you know, listen, you're under stress. They're under stress. Reach them, you know. I yeah, they were, pretty, they were pretty good for calling me down after those kinds of phone calls. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I guess for me, like, this is why I know I can't be in customer service is just genuinely, I hate the idea of, like, if I did this to somebody, I would hate myself. Where if I made, like, somebody's day worse because I, like, blew up at them. So, like, I just, I always struggle to, like, understand why other people can be like, oh, yeah, it's fine to yell at a customer service person. They're not human like us. It might no. be one of the few. I I also theorize just now, they're one of the few people like you don't have like, you don't have, well, <clears throat> they introduce their name usually, but other than that, you don't really <laughs> know much about them. You know nothing about them. Yeah, like you don't know much about them. <laughs> you can't even see their face. And so, and especially if you're stressed in general or having a shitty time. <laughs> That's probably one of the few people that you actually feel like you can yell at, if you, especially if you don't want to yell at your boss, you don't want to yell at your family, or whatever the case is. I guess. So I that's, guess that's, that's a theory. theory. Yeah, no, no, I, I understand. I guess, like, for me, like, my idea, or at least my viewpoint is, like, you shouldn't yell at anyone. Like, if you are that upset, like, take it out on, like, an inanimate object, or, like, like <laughs> scream into a pillow for a bit, just to get that stress out, because... People have feelings. Objects don't. That's why they sell damn it dolls. Yeah. <laughs> they even say on the label, it's like, you can take the damn it doll and throw it on the ground. You can scream at it. You can punch it. Do whatever you want with it. That, that can be helpful. I do think that it, I worry, does it look like a person or something? Because that might be bad. Um, kind of, but like a voodoo, sort of a voodoo doll esque. Okay, so that you can like throw at the TV like a and whatnot. Doll thing. It doesn't look like any particular type of person. Okay. No, no. it's it's like a cloth doll. Thing. Although they did yeah. sell some of them with a certain um, president's face on them. <laughs> I don't remember that. Well, I mean, every, there's always an exception. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a joke. All right. Uh, but yeah, I actually remember, um, like, oh gosh, when was this? This was, like, early in grad school. I used to have a punching bag, and that was so good, like, used for when I was, like, really, like, stressed out. Like, I cannot tell you how nice and, like, stress-relieving it is to, like, hit something. And, like, it just, like, gets a lot of, like, your own, like, ang- anger and out out of you like that very mm-hmm. quickly. Nice. Of course... I will say, only do it to proper gym equipment that is meant to be hit like that. Don't hit <laughs> something else, and definitely never hit another person, obviously. No, no. Uh, but yeah, uh, so let's go ahead and continue. But why did that one hurt his feelings so badly? To the point that his eyes are welling up with tears. 
Maybe it's because he went through hell and back, and that man has no idea. Mm -hmm. No idea. Then, his computer screen seemed to stretch far away, and Cameron finds himself grabbing the edge of his desk like he's about to fall over. Pressure grows in his right ear, and he realizes that maybe that's what's causing the strange feeling of being off balance as the world tilts. But no, he's tripping again. It's a flashback. Just a flashback. No. It's brain damage, and you'll probably feel like this forever. Brian poisoned you. Cameron holds very still. Positive he didn't think those thoughts just now. And you are a fucking squeak. Can't have a little literal customer stereotype? Just smash the keyboard and admit you can't work anymore. Cameron brings a paw up to his right ear, where the voice came from. Is his headset still on, or...? No. And you can tell it's coming from inside your head, idiot. You stupid fuck. Worthless. After that, Cameron remembers very little except panic, followed by confusion. A ton of confusion. His thoughts make no sense. The voice that is definitely not his thoughts doesn't make sense. And now he doesn't understand where he is. The voice continues to encourage him to smash the keyboard. So he does just to see if maybe it will break this bizarre half-dream. Devin, in his own study, hears this. After finding Cameron sobbing on the ground, surrounded by black plastic keycaps, and bleeding from reopened stitches, frantic Devin drives him to the hospital. Maybe I'll stop if you grab the wheel and turn it into the median. For old time's sake. And he doesn't even need a fucking fan. Look, Mom, no fans. <laughs> the voice. The voice snickers. It continues to laugh at him all the way to the psychiatric ward. Uh-oh. Yep, we skipped six months. About seven months after Echo, and six months after his episode, Cameron feels worse than he did right after Echo. The voice that had wormed his way into its damaged ear had disappeared after just a few days of antipsychotic treatment, but it returned again, and again, every few days. Whenever something upset him, whenever he gets into arguments with Devin, and really, whenever it pleases, it makes itself known. It comes in a deep masculine voice, though sometimes it's Brian-like in how it taunts and laughs at him. Short asides that were sometimes mean, sometimes meaningless, and sometimes boring. All about the things Cameron would do, and the people he would see. It feels like it's trying to remind Cameron things aren't okay, as weeks continue to come and go with manageable but clearly present psychotic symptoms. He had worried his broken arm would stop him from being able to play music as well as he used to. Turns out, he didn't have to worry about that at all, because he doesn't give a fuck anymore. 
like a switch, his interests, his motivation, his want to do anything productive or useful seem to just turn off. His thought process had been wrecked, and the disorganized thought during his episodes became present even when he wasn't having one. His mother said she needed meth because it fought the feelings that her psychosis brought on, which was brought on by the meth. A vicious cycle. And speaking of which, he finally got his diagnosis. Alright, before we find out the diagnosis, do you guys have an idea of what it is? Uh, diagnosis or, um, or character? It is actually a diagnosis. My fear, well, I'm not sure if this is the full diagnosis, but it might be, uh, a withdrawal, like a severe withdrawal of whatever Brian gave him. The psilocybin? Yeah. Hmm. Um, that's interesting, but no. Um, um, I'm gonna point out it... his main symptom is he is hearing things now and he's also having thoughts that are not his own, but I'm going to also put some so... other things into context that happened before this. He used to see things that weren't there before either. So... It... Well, go ahead first. <clears throat> well, no, no, actually, I think Hannah should go last, because I think yeah. Hannah has the best chance of guessing. I think okay. it might be um, post-traumatic stress coupled with schizophrenia. All right. Mm. Any other guesses? I'm going to go on a whim and say, well... It's another voice, right? Uh, yes. So it's not, like, actively in, in control? It is not, but it will pester him until he gives in to it. <sighs> okay, so that does not get what I was initially thinking. Okay. Because I was initially thinking, like, um, GID question mark. Dissociative identity disorder? Alright. Yep. Yeah, no, it does not have its own ability to do anything. Right. Okay. Yeah. I am similar to Seb. I was going to go with schizophrenia. Yeah. Which, I think it's also interesting. Yeah, like, it could potentially also be, like, aggravated by the PT by PTSD from that situation. I hadn't thought of that, but... Yeah, I'm going to point out something else that should really tip you off on this, Hannah, is... In, uh, I will say you guys are pretty close, if not actually correct. I don't want to tell you quite yet. Um, but Cameron is 25 at this time. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to also state something that's really fascinating when you look at the eight different builds' names. The first build of Arches that came out was called Meaning and Patterns. The second build, which is the one that I started with, was 180 degrees. The third build was Cascading Failure. And then the fourth build had a very interesting name. Prodrome. Say that again? Prodrome. Oh. Would it be early onset in uh, dementia? Um, so, I'm going to say you're getting colder now. Okay. You might have been correct. I'm going to point that out. I just am not telling mm -hmm. you until we get through all this. I just wanted to go through this stuff before we get to the actual diagnosis. But what prodrome means is receiving symptoms of something before it fully comes into effect. Mm. It's like the pre-symptoms of an illness of some type. Okay. Yeah. The fifth build mm. was spiked, and that's actually where uh, Brian spikes uh, Cameron's tea. The sixth build is plasticity, like your brain's plasticity. Yeah. The seventh build is psychosis and then this build that we're playing now permanence Ooh. yeah i'll say is there like mm, so god 
I was just gonna say, like certain conditions like sch schizophrenia don't really go away. Mm -hmm. You can treat it, but that doesn't really go away once you start developing symptoms. Mm -hmm. You guys are you So, just general question about that. Like, before you fully develop, is there a way to try to, like, to prevent it? Treat it to prevent or tr to treat it before it fully develops? Kinda. The thing is, yeah. so I actually know a little bit more about schizophrenia than I probably should, and that's because my. I mean, you're been... you're a psych well, major. No, 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 no. Remember, mm. I didn't do anything clinical. I did not study abnormal psychology. Mm. My reason for why I know this is my aunt actually had a nervous breakdown in her mid twenties that got misdiagnosed as schizophrenia. And huh. so she had been medicated for with schizophrenic medication throughout her entire life. It's only been within the past like five or six years that they finally realized she wasn't schizophrenic. She just had an anxiety disorder. And so they had been mistreating mm. her for oh my two gosh. plus decades. Yeah. Jeez. Because I think whenever, yeah, because this is the first time that I had heard that they had misdiagnosed her. Like, because I think the last time you told me about it, yeah, it was that she... She that she had schizophrenia. That was, that was our understanding for the longest time. Wow. But there were some subtle signs that we should have realized that she actually wasn't schizophrenic. And that was that uh, her medication would give her shaky hands like Parkinson's. Mm. Because the way that schizophrenia works is uh, it is you receiving too much dopamine in your prefrontal cortex. At least that's one yeah. of the causes. There's multiple causes beyond that, but that's one of the big ones that they treat. And so yeah. they will give you a medication that actually reduces how much dopamine you're getting in your prefrontal cortex. But the flip side of that is if you're receiving too little, you actually show the symptoms of Parkinson's disease instead. Because Parkinson's, yeah, it's a lack of dopamine. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other reason why I, I looked up so much information about schizophrenia is it has a high uh, hereditary chance of being like inherited and everything. Like uh, mm. if, if my mom had schizophrenia, I would have had a 50% chance of developing it myself. Mm. But uh, because my aunt has it, I well, she we thought she had it, I would have had a 12.5% chance of still developing it. It's that mm. inheritable. Mm -hmm. That's so, a 1 in 8 chance that I would have had schizophrenia, and so I looked up a lot of stuff about it because of that. Yeah. Um, based, based on what, like, the symptoms are, are for Cameron, I feel like it is schizophrenia. Yeah, here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the diagnosis. Hmm. Schizophrenia. Likely induced by the trauma and drug use in Echo. Yes. So, one of the big things about schizophrenia in particular is it has three sets of symptoms. You have the negative symptoms, the neutral symptoms, and then the positive symptoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, negative is where you have lacking things. Mm -hmm. Positive is like where you're adding things that weren't there before. Mm -hmm. So like, so positive would mean like you're now hearing voices that weren't there before or seeing things that normally wouldn't be there. Exactly. Where, yeah, negative symptoms can be like, oh, you, you're losing your ability to like control limb movements and things like that. Mm-hmm. And what's really interesting about schizophrenia is it's a gradual development um, where typically it comes into full force, typically in the mid-20s. Mm -hmm. It can be later onset, it could be earlier onset, but sadly enough, at around 25, Cameron's at like the right age to f have it fully go into effect. Mm -hmm. And some of the big things as well about schizophrenia at least some of the research indicates, is that it doesn't have to go that far, especially if like you can catch it earlier, you can treat it a little bit. And if you can avoid uh, having somebody with schizophrenia go through too much stress, you might be able to prevent it from going too heavy. It's not something that can be fully prevented, but it can be something that might be able to be reduced. However, think about Cameron's own background. Yep. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think I, it... it mm -mm. It makes the this spe this specific part like the, like very important because it's like you know you you have that trauma you have that like traumatic experience it is 
the point of no return, but also like it's it's per it's permanent, and it's also like v like a lot worse than it should have been if it were like caught earlier. It could be could at least be less, mm -hmm. but um, permanence just makes it ever so more worse. Yeah, that like, makes sense. The events in Echo, uh, probably just made it concrete. With yeah. Cameron's past experiences, he probably could have still developed schizophrenia. Especially since, uh, it, it seemed like his mom probably had some, uh, schizophrenic tendencies as well, apart from the drug use. Um, yeah, and, yeah, and so voices from the fan. yeah, I think he could have still developed schizophrenia, but if he, uh, if the events in Echo didn't happen, it wouldn't have been so much and so permanent. Yeah. Now, I will state regarding this as well, is it's treatable. It's obviously not able to be gotten rid of, but you can reduce the symptoms. Mm-hmm. But it's, with any mental disorder, treating it is a real rough because you have to go through a lot of different drugs and you have to go through a lot of therapy in order to move past it. And even then, like, you're not moving past it. You're really more learning Managing. how to live and manage with it. Yeah. And I actually kind of wonder about the writers for Echo because... I don't think that they have schizophrenia, but I do think that they must have some experience with something like this because they wrote something similar with Chase having PTSD after Leo's route, you know? Yeah, and they seem to really like, well, and in both arches, well, in general, they seem to be interested in psychology mm -hmm. because you have a couple of characters that are majoring in psychology as well. <laughs> that is true. So, Somebody must have, somebody must have gone to undergrad for psychology, <laughs> at the very least. They were in grad school and they're like, we can never graduate, I guess we'll write a video game. <laughs> you know, actually, now that I think about it, that is kind of what led me to start working on my own game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to graduate here, I'll work on this video game. <laughs> I eventually did graduate, but I'm still working on that game now. <laughs> I, I, it'll, 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 if it won't be a bestseller, it'll be a bestseller in my heart when it comes out. <laughs> Thank you. But Here. yeah, with, with the, all this, it's fascinating to see this, because the other thing I was going to point out is they do a really good job of showcasing that this happened to these characters, but like their, their mental disorder doesn't make them. It's not the only thing about them. Yeah. There's so much about these people because at the end of the day, they are people. Mm. Well, like that's that's something of. that I've always disliked about like uh I know I know you think Chase is a rock DJ, I understand. No, no I I actually like Chase, but I also like to pick on him. <laughs> but yeah, what I, was, what I was just trying to say is with a lot of like other times I see like characters get represented in media they tend to just be like, oh, well, they have this mental disorder and that's everything about them. Mm -hmm. Well, there's mental disorders are so often all there is. Yeah, mental disorders are often presented as either the plot point of a television or movie series or the, uh, either the plot point or the, uh, or the superpower. One. Yeah. And, like, like, you have, like, you know, Monk, and Monk is a very well-written, likable character who has motivations and things beyond his, um, his, uh, OCD. OCD, but his OCD is the premise of the show and kind of the comedy behind the show. Yeah. Um, or then you get some other shows where you have people who have, you know, psychosomatic syndrome, sy symptoms, and the whole show is just about, hey, look at Bob. Bob sees things. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, with with all of this, it, it's fascinating to like see how they genuinely go out of their way to really get us to like, know these characters and understand them, and even mm -hmm. see from their point of view. And it, it will be interesting to see how Dev 
responds in this situation because this is extremely stressful on death mm -hmm. right yeah, no, but on the flip okay. side of that he's an extremely loving and supportive boyfriend so it'll be interesting to see you know did can't like i'm almost like either it's going to be too much for dev which would be understandable if disappointing or cameron won the if you do have schizophrenia lottery of having someone who's going to be like committed to taking care yeah, of him it wouldn't have been the schizophrenia lottery it was the romantic relationship lottery yeah <laughs> i was saying he won the if you have to have schizophrenia here's the lottery here's the here's the, here's the support boyfriend <laughs> here's your here's your support teddy bear <laughs> and i will point out though don't forget devin is still going through stuff as well Mm -hmm. yeah, that's and he went probably... through a similar <laughs> level of trauma maybe not the exact same but he was locked up in a van and had to watch as his boyfriend was beaten and abused in front of him yeah mm -hmm. he's probably suffering a lot of ptsd and dev so okay so game direction is going because you know you don't develop i mean you do develop schizophrenia but like it's a genetic condition it's not a I took you to or I took you to Echo, and you sure do have schizophrenia. Well, I mean, there are stre like it can be kind of provoked earlier yeah. on through stress. So there's going to be a lot of guilt. That's what I was trying what to I'm point saying. out earlier with a uh, what I was saying about schizophrenia is it can be caused to happen earlier. It can be caused to happen more yeah. intensely, especially through trauma and stress. And that if yeah, you, so there's if you reduce there, that and avoid it, you can prevent like serious symptoms from occurring. As much. So, it, in in his, I don't want to say selfishness, but selfishness is kind of the, the the word here, where he was like, "Oh, let's go do this thing. Let's go check this out." He and and you know, uh, Cam kept being like, "This is not me seeing the dead. This is hallucination. hallucination. I'm sick. I need help." And Dev's like, "You're not sick. This is your superpower." And so and there's going to be that guilt trip. Devin was kind of right but also wrong. Yeah, and so that's... Both of them were right, and that's what's sad about that. That That's... Yeah. Um, as I said, I have thoughts. Um, Brian became the main plot point. I would have enjoyed the supernatural plot point being more focused on, because there was a lot of, like, tension being built on that, and then Brian was our main plot. Like, Brian was our pretty much only focus for, like, three builds, and I was like, oh, no, okay... I don't mind him being present, I guess, but I kind of, I was like, oh, I want to see where the rest of that story went. I will point out, though, what would have been the danger in Echo without Brian? Uh, the supernatural. The, 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 the supernatural. I was enjoying, I was enjoying the natural tension. Mm -hmm. But I want to point of... this out to you again. Did the supernatural stuff ever hurt anyone outside of Cameron? Um... We haven't quite seen it with Ch with Chase and his friends yet, but it does feel like something is I mean, I guess you have supernatural that's, yeah, that's driving them to do things they normally wouldn't do, or kind of pushing those buttons to make... Yeah, like, like at the very... Here's the thing, the, the Chekhov's gun mm -hmm. was... Or, or the Chekhov's gun early in the, uh, in the game wasn't the supernatural, wasn't Brian. Like, they weren't getting... We didn't get any things of Brian. The, the Chekhov's gun was like this tension between their relationship and should we poke should we poke at this button or should we not poke at this button? So I'm going to point out something that you forgot about, DJ. Think about the thing that I have everyone in our group whenever I'm like, oh, we should show you like what is like the darkest stuff we'll ever do in one of these playthroughs. I always show them the intro to Arches. <laughs> What's in yeah. the intro here? Brian. It's Chekhov's gun. <laughs> Brian had been hinted about. Oh yeah, I guess he is. He is the intro. Yeah. 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 And even then, like there is actually like them doing some stuff with supernatural things, but it's always only Cameron and Devin worrying about Cameron afterward. And I'll also point out at that lake scene, Devin like it's almost like this entire story is written from looking back by Cameron and Devin after the fact, where. Devin says he wishes that he had turned left, but instead he turned right. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I had the directions wrong, but he was think he wishes looking back on things that he hadn't gone into Echo. And instead went back the way they came, 
uh, Cameron could have complained about the car ride, but he would have given him a shitty, like, uh, sugary drink from Starbucks, and that would have shut his Yodi butt up, and they would have been <laughs> happy ever after and gotten married a couple years later. Mm hmm And even then, like, there's also the fact that Cameron uses his psychic abilities to help him really, truly understand how bad things are with Brian and help him get out of it. And mm -hmm. see Brian's past victims inside his trailer. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so much that goes on with Cameron being really the one necessary to, like, help with, I guess, if Cameron and Devin hadn't been there, Brian would have continued. Brian yeah, is the only last threat left of Echo. Because the ghosts may be still having, like, the hysteria trying to fuel them but it doesn't have anything to actually fuel its fire anymore aside from Brian. Yeah. Brian's the only one causing misery and pain still within its land. And even and recently, that, and the hence part. the Chekhov's gun at the beginning, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. I Also, what I mean is just personal preference, more so than writing preference. I get you. No, I won't lie. I kind of yeah. wish that we had uh, done something aside from Brian as well. Yeah, but... and it was for like three builds, and I was like, by build three of Brian, I'm like, okay. We've definitely seen them get punched enough, thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, co completely different question. Will, um, with how, like, we're getting time skips this early, like, into the build, I don't even know how far this build goes, but um, will we see this catch up to real world time, current, or... Will we at Do least have within a year? It was released in real world time, and then you know they were releasing okay. it bit by bit. So like the the was it quite real world the game so, the so game wait. was released in. I don't know because we we voice hack it in. Out. I can tell you when this game came out. The first build came out, I believe, June of 2021. Yep, and we okay. started so playing it in year. August of 2021. Yeah, because I was gonna say we did play it at your house unmasked. So yeah, it was a little over a year after it would have taken place. Okay. Yeah, I think it was like the first time we saw each other in person, though, if I recall correctly. Yes, <laughs> and this build here came out. I want to say June of 2023. It might have been okay. May. So I mean, re my reason being is just like, well, we skipped literally seven months. In Six 2020. Months. Six? Oh, yeah, we went okay. from April Six... to October. Okay. Six months in 2020. Like, I'm like, huh. Are they gonna catch up to 23? Or are they gonna catch up to, like, some other date? Because it seems like they are, like, gaining, they're gaining, like, time pretty quickly. Well, I will point out that what's going on right now in the story, this is definitely the conclusion. The... Climax was getting... them fighting Brian in the caves. Yeah, yeah, we're getting the po post loot at this point. Yeah, so like so we're just we're like seeing, okay, so... we're seeing will there be a happily ever after or not? Okay, got it. Yeah. All right, makes sense. And honestly, Thanks. like I want to hear from everyone here. Do you think this story will have a happy ending? I, it, <sighs> I'm getting hints that it's probably not going to be as happy of ending as we would like it to be. Mm -hmm. Especially because, yeah, at the beginning of the game, like you said, it, De it seemed like Devin was telling from the perspective of regret. And not, and it's like, oh, maybe if I would have turned back, we would have, it's like they would have gotten married and things like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm not as optimistic that it's going to be a happy ending. <laughs> okay. So yeah. we have one vote for not a happy ending. I think it's not going to be happy, but I don't think it's going to be awful. So, are you saying, like, bittersweet? Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. So I, I think the same for me here. Um, I, I think it would... I think what may, what may happen is they may break up on good terms. That I, That's how I feel. Like, it, I, I think it might just, at some point, become too much. But both, um, I guess, both will go on their own ways, but will kind of just deal with what happens. Both understanding that they they, they want to leave each other for this for each other's both sanity and also general happiness. 
if I if see. something comes out of um what is seen and if, if like because well actually other other than that you also have like the powers which are just lower or are like little to none i'm just curious to see what happens with uh the faded powers that are still there but and, and on top of this the diagnosed schizophre schizophrenia all right so it sounds like two votes for a sad ending two votes for an or one vote for a bittersweet um, I haven't heard from Matt or DJ yet. I think I'll just ride out the ride. So you don't have a thought of what type of ending it's going to be? There's a lot of directions the writers could go with this. Okay. How about you, Matt? Matt? Hmm? What type of ending do you think is going to be here at the end of Arches? Hmm... <laughs> I want to say something very bittersweet. Okay. So we've got two and two. Nobody thinks this is going to end with a happy ending. Understood. And then and then they walk off into the sunset. Having After he takes his meds, he feels better. And then <laughs> him and, and then the two of them go, wow, that was, that was some shit we should never talk about. And then they giggle as they walk off into the sunset. <laughs> Yeah. BJ, that's a that's such an adorable <laughs> mindset. <laughs> yeah, I have a question then. So, like, what would you define as happy for them? Because I think we Ooh. all can agree. No, there is no chance of them like frolicking on the beach somewhere in Kokomo and like going like, ah, we had our dream wedding and now we're on our honeymoon. Like, no, we had our dream happy. wedding in a desert town. <laughs> I mean, I would see like the last frame that is shown being like both of them being crippled but crippled but happy I, I i want to see like a full body shot of both characters either front or like from the back like happy hopefully like hopefully either at the wedding or somewhere at, at or somewhere else which just may happen just just to like adapt to what happens Shit, possibly some little minor arc going on but you know to overcome that and you know and eh. he, he, hear me out i have a plan so dev takes care of Jay. devs ta dev takes care of uh cam and he and there is this like bittersweet thing and then it ends with they live they live their lives together in st louis why St. Louis? <laughs> no, I'd, I'd personally stay away from St. Louis. Under an arch. Oh, oh God. Oh, <laughs> I mean, they could go personally, on a trip. I'd stay away from St. Louis. But... Oh, no. <laughs> Send it to the Timeout channel. <laughs> uh, any happy ending was dashed the, uh, the moment he uh, heard voices. I see. So you think that there's yeah, no exactly. chance of, of happiness for Cameron? No, the Cameron is going to be perpetually unhappy. Like I, I mean with 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 Chase and his voice, like he didn't notice this as much. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, notice I it as much. Though, so um Sam is not the same thing as schizophrenia. I will just say that. I know, right now. I know. <laughs> I mean yeah. so that that's I that say, is the... I do think both of them are very malicious, but they are very different. One can be treated yeah. with medicine, the other one has to be treated with an exorcism. Um, yeah. it, it, for what it's worth, though, I will say this goes without saying, but should be said. People with schizophrenia can live happy, normal lives, oh, right? Yes. And yeah, so yeah, they totally yeah. I don't hate the idea of a changed but happy, like, like a changed but what will you ha happy is a relative word here. But happy ending, right? Because I don't like you were saying earlier. It's nice that they've built up these characters as characters, as people, and not as a diagnosis. And again, people with schizophrenia, people with whatever insert intellectual disability or uh, uh, non what, what's the term? Not non uh, traditional. Uh, uh, what's the what's the correct term to use? No, like right. not. Yeah, neurodivergent. Neurodivergent individuals can live normal and happy lives. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would be actually a little disappointed if we're like, and then he got schizophrenia, and now everybody hates everything. 
the end, right? <laughs> like, yeah. that's 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 not the best message because people have neuro neurodivergencies that live completely normal and comfortable lives, and yes, need to take meds daily, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And I will point out, like, and it doesn't change who they are either, right? Like, that's that's mm -hmm. an important thing to be to be said. And I mean, I, I don't know any individual with schizophrenia, but I know like a million individuals with ADHD who parents and family members were concerned about medicating because they're like, "Is this going to change what I love about this person?" Mm -hmm. And no, it doesn't. It just makes them able to function a function little a little bit more comfortably. <laughs> But they're still wild, motor mouth, crazy little, beautiful people that go insane. They can just go, oh wait, I can. I need to listen and lecture right now, right? Like, so I I don't hate the idea of us getting where there's still love between these two, and the schizophrenia doesn't define. It does, def like, it does define. Your neurodivergencies define you, but not necessarily always in a tragic way. They don't define you entirely. They make Correct. Yeah. They're a part they're of your personality, the way like, being obnoxious and loud is part story, of my personality. Yeah, yeah, and, I mean, I think that, that, I mean, not only for that, but in general, for, that that goes, honestly, for every invisible disability. Yeah. Because... Um, I, I've I, I've seen people being accused like, oh, you don't have a disability. I'm like, well, mm, no, I mean, yes, you can't see it, but you know, it, mm -hmm. you can you yeah. can still have that and still live a hap mm -hmm. happy life. I mean, so you you can just be care take, taken care of, and you know, you can just live. Mm -hmm. And and especially since these writers have been so mindful of neurodivergencies, it would be nice to see. Again, I'm not looking for I'm not looking for a cop out ending because that would be kind of disappointing too at this point. They've built us up for something where if they're just like and then they walk off in the sunset and everybody's happy. <laughs> that would be that would be poor writing as well. Um, so, but I, I don't hate the idea of they've built up Deb to love the living heck out of, of, Cam. of Cam. And to be willing to make adjustments, changes, and listen to what each other needs right that's one of the things they're very good at and again i don't really know where the writers want to go in th with this which is why i do withhold my vote um but i i, I would be disappointed it would it would feel very um anticlimactic not anticlimactic uh, non-satiating uh, uh there's a better word than that unfulfilling uh, unfulfilling i guess if if it's like and then this couple that we built up one of them has a mental disorder, so they break up. Yeah. Cause right? Like, 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 I'd be so be disappointed in the characters that they built for us. I just want to throw out there as well that, remember way back when I pointed out how with Echo, it seemed like that, like, the Echo game was an anti-romance story. And then when we started playing Arches, I was like, holy shit, is Cameron and, like, Devin a commentary about how Chase and Leah were a really bad couple? Because Cameron and Devin are like the same couple, but like actually being healthy about it. Yeah, they li they have their differences, but they listen to each other and they talk to each other. And and I mean like, you know, you, you, being in a relationship isn't about being young and in your twenties and happy with each other. It's about talking to each other as your life changes and your life will change over the span of, you know, the long term a long term relationship. And like even like my parents, I always joke about this. My parents were actually kind of as obnoxious as Hannah and I were until like kind of their fifties even. Uh, <laughs> and they <laughs> argue a bit more now, but they still anymore. Yeah. No, no, honestly, they 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 they, they uh they would argue in front of us when we were kids. My parents do not hide arguments. Um, <laughs> not even from Hannah. <laughs> but like nope. they argue, but they are, but they, there's that moment beyond arguing of like this is the this is a choice we've made to take care of each other, and so I don't know. I like that they built. I again, I would feel very dissatisfied if this if they were right. If they're like, look at this couple that knows how to actually be healthy with each other. Well, put a couple of curveballs in, it and we'll kill that too, right? Mm -hmm. Like. There's no that would such be... thing as a relationship. Every, yeah. Everyone breaks up eventually. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Or like, oh, to, you can be in a young and happy relationship, but the moment shit hits the fan, well, sayonara, baby. You're just screwed. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I, I, I could see writing going in that direction, and I wouldn't... I'd be dissatisfied, but I would understand it. Um, mm -hmm. it I'm, as I said, there are a couple of choices that were made already that I did not love. Um, so, you know, I'm not the writer. The the only thing I want to throw out there now, like here at the end, is I, I do want to just say I personally love Arches a lot. It's my favorite of the Echo series, and uh, I, I do actually like the ending. However, that's not a spoiler because the thing is, I love bittersweet and sad endings. <laughs> but what does that say? Uh, okay. I mean, yeah, like to like to, to the, the moon, moon for example. Hell. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful, but it's sad. Um, because like the thing is, oh yes, he gets to see River again in his mind, but the real River never got to. Yep. Yeah, and uh, before your eyes, that's also a very bittersweet and sad. Yeah, the kid, uh, without spoilers. Mm -hmm. The without events of before spoilers. your eyes still happen. Mm -hmm. But it talks about how there's beauty in those events. Yeah. Um, and how it kind of come to terms with them. And I don't know, that's life, right? Like, life, listen, we're not going to, likely we'll not get the living shit beaten out of us by, uh, a psychopathic a bear. psychopathic killer serial killer <laughs> um but life even even small stressors in life can be very s difficult on relationships and so like i i i would like it if this was an exploration in that oh yeah and then yeah right. just to continue on with like my commentary so that way you guys know i really am serious i do like all types of endings favorite disney movie fox and the hound that is <laughs> very, yes, we do know that. Sweet. Yeah. I have, I have a, I have a poster of that fucking movie as well as a DVD right next to my <laughs> Minecraft fox, my, my my like Lego Minecraft fox Lego set. <laughs> it's on my shrine. <laughs> and then nice. uh, my favorite live action movie, um, before this, it actually was um, What Dreams May Come. Which, that entire movie is about, oh yeah, this family all die horribly and tragically, but at least they're in heaven now. <laughs> I mean, oh. that's, that's the good ending of it, is that this family that died horribly, at least they made it to heaven eventually. I I remember reading The Boy in Striped Pajamas. <laughs> um, the, end of, the end of that book, and also the, the, the uh, movie, is... You have a Jewish child and a and the child of a Nazi office a Nazi officer both dying in the gas chambers. Oh boy. Together. Mm. No, I do remember that one, yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't oh, watch man. that one because like I'm okay with bittersweet. That's just depressing. It, I'm okay I with read sad it. endings too, but that one is like you, that is a depressing ending. You know I, it's a Holocaust film I haven't <laughs> watched because I generally avoid them, but it is is a bittersweet Holocaust film is uh Oh shoot! Name forgot. Um, it's like life is wonderful or something like that. It's not life is beautiful, which is the Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. um, it's a wonderful life. Is yeah, it's yeah. Christmas. Oh no. So yeah, it's, it's life is beautiful, not it's a wonderful life. And it it's a dad and his kid in the concentration camps. <laughs> it's so intense. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it. Lots of my family has. I avoid concert. Mm -hmm. I avoid uh, uh, generally. I avoid Holocaust movies. They're so depressing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, and oh, all right, here I will say, this is a very, this is a very good and deep conversation. Uh, <laughs> we need to get out. Yeah, no, we need to get out. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Woo. 